Well, that was really exciting for me. I love seeing somebody who has an interest in this and is starting to deal as a reseller actually coming out and doing a show. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, these chairs I haven't seen before, and they're kind of wild. They combine lucite and orange vinyl and a little bit of iron. So they're everything that people are looking for right now. They're a great style. They do appear to be older because of the caps on the feet and the tops. But I have not seen those before. These folks have some beautiful pocket watches with some lovely cases and cases. Yeah, those are all 14 and 18 karat. They're all 14 and 18 karat gold. Yeah. That makes Everything sense. Yeah, they're beautiful. Gold coins, gold bracelets, the mason rings. Oh, yes. Enamel, 18 karat. Oh, I like that, the little fish. Yeah. Is that by a designer of any sort? It I know marked, it doesn't. But my loop isn't powerful enough to read the To uh, read the mark because they're so tiny it's sometimes. 18 karat. That is really neat. And she's very pretty with the uh, pearls yeah. around her. Little portrait pin. Yeah. That's 18 karat also. Oh, that's great. It's nice to have the uh, finer gold when you can find it. Yeah, yeah this, some really this pretty is pieces. Karat. That's a first century AD uh, Jewish coin in the uh, bezel. Oh, interesting. So it's not a shekel, though, right? Because it's not silver or. No. But what a neat uh, bronze coin in a bezel. That's really cool. Well, it, it's a rare uh, make of their coin. It's a larger denomination, isn't yeah, the it? Last yeah. One sold on auction, brought a little over thirteen hundred without a bezel. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic! So the coin itself is valuable. Yeah. Very neat. And this is interesting. The uh, mason. The masons. Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen that pendant from the before. Nineteen thirties. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at the workmanship. Yeah. And is that fourteen carat? Fourteen carat. Yeah, it's beautiful. How much is that piece? Uh, I'd have to weigh it. Sure. It's probably going to be in a 700 range. I would think like so. It's solid, it's heavy. Yeah. Nice chunk of gold. Yeah, that's that's really nice. And I mean, it's funny how with the price of gold up so far, it's like for it the went collector. Back up, it's over 1800 again. It went below 17 or it went below 1800. But for the collector, it means that you can buy something that's really collectible, basically for gold anymore. It seems right, like. Right. And look at these beautiful watch cases. Yeah, gold watch cases are just very special, and this is what you really want these days if you have pocket watches, mm -hmm. because the value really is more in the I case. I like the Florida Lee one with the uh, little diamonds. Yeah. That's how it would be worn, so this would have been a locket watch rather than a pocket watch. The shark. That looks like it would have been exciting if that had been around when I was a kid, but it's a little before my time. Race cars didn't look like that anymore after about 1970. Push em ups didn't look like this anymore after about 1955. This is an older one. These bagatelles, as they were called, had baseball sometimes, other sorts of things like space cadet and really cool things that are worth a lot of money now. The sand mill's in great shape, and then there's this. These have been ubiquitous. I've seen these over and over, but they always sell for good money because people really love them. And then this is interesting because it's Japanese, but look at the back. It's actually surprisingly realistic for a 1950s Japanese because this is, if you know your 1959 car models, a Buick, and it looks just like it in the front as well. It's amazing they got the stamping so right. Makes you wonder if they were in collab or something. It's good. It needs a bubble top, but then it would be worth about 150. Here's a nice example of a piece of Ozark pottery. This stuff's really heavy and dense. It's almost like concrete, and the decoration was applied only to the outside, so it's got coloration. 
but it doesn't come through into the inside as you see. A lot of these were sold by roadside tourist shops in the 1930s and 40s for not a whole lot of money. They're pretty collectible now. I see prices anywhere from $45 to $100 on pieces of this size. When you see the word Dominion in the United States, we typically associate that with something from Canada. The Dominion of Canada being the feature. And this 1950s DAA sign, which would have hung on either a restaurant or a hotel, is a great example of that. It has the fleur-de-lis and the maple leaf and was made by Wright Metal Signs, as you can see there. So it is a product of Canada, and that's going to be worth somewhere in the 250 to 300 range. I remember this wiggle with jiggles being out in front of grocery stores when I was very, very little, and you would stand on there and then put a little bit of money in the machine and then be shaken around while you stared at that. I'm not sure how that was appealing. This is a very handsome mirror with the shell crest. And it appears that it is made of wood. If you look at the back. And that's definitely what is preferable over plastic, although the plastic mirrors are selling now as well. Used cars. A tequila pinata. So you never know what you're going to see, or it could be all sorts of strange things. And then I'm going to turn this way past this very peculiar alien looking statue that somebody has made out of a million different things, which is a lot of fun. It's very bug-like. And we're going to turn this way because what I really wanted to show you is this cabinet here. This is 1950s with this maple finish. But look at all the low flat drawers. This would have been something for storage in an office of paper or various things. We might even be able to see what they used to keep in here. Nope, nope, they're pretty worn off. But what's really nice is that you've got all these little drawers for stuff. So people who collect flat items, like paper ephemera, for example, maps, little tiny objects, Cracker Jack toys. Collectors love these types of multi-shelf cases because they're really useful for a lot of little things. I don't see prices on anything, so I haven't been able to give you any. I know people like it when we can tell prices, but so far I haven't seen any. Wow, look at the big ice cream cone. And most of a Sunday, and another ice cream cone. These are 1950s or 60s, and they are from, obviously, outside of an ice cream parlor. They are cool. These signs are popping up all over, and I want to point them out because they are reproductions. They're printed on an old Jolicy window, so sometimes the glass looks old. So you need to watch out for that because they are reproductions. They're cool, but they're a little too perfect. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, you know, that's one of the railroads you would want to have. Winchester, Smith & Wesson, I mean, they're popular for decorating and man caves and stuff, and that's cool, but it's just too good to be true. She looks like she's going somewhere fast. There's a good catalog. Anytime you see anything related to magic. And this is fairly early, probably around 19 teens. It's not in great shape, but there can't be many of these left. It's priced at 24 and it's copyrighted 1922. And it shows all sorts of wonderful tricks that you can do. And then you can order the apparatus to do it from this place in Kansas City. These people have some fun stuff. Here's the Aunt Jemima rain shakers, Aunt Jemima and Uncle Moe's, and there's the little pitcher. I like this smoker guy. I'm going to ask about him. Anything where smoke comes out of their nose makes me smile. And things that make me smile are good things. This is an unusual piece of Peruvian silver filigree. And it is marked, but you can usually tell Peruvian anyway because of the... I'm going to be very gentle here. Because of the nature of the filigree and the way that it twists. And on the other side, yeah, we'll show you the little block mark. 
it's a little hard to see there, but it's that little square there. That's the tag that marks it. That is wonderful. And just the detail in the Peruvian is so amazing to me. I mean, every strand of that had to be laid by hand. Yeah. Hey. That is just a really cool piece. And may I ask how much? 250. 250 for that amount of work. That just doesn't seem like a lot of money if you think about what it would cost to try to replicate something like that. You'd be hard pressed to find someone who could do it for that. So now we're out back. This is the only time of year that this show is so big that it expands into the back parking lot. You can see tents behind me and there's probably another 30 or 40 dealers. Let's go check them out. <laughs> oh, you're good. So this is one of my viewers and she and her mom came in yesterday and it was so nice to meet them and they are here showing. So I'm excited to see what they have and take a look and we'll play around a little bit together. Now I gotta say, this is the first Afghan I've seen in this show and as popular as they are right now, I'm surprised that it's still here for $10 and I think it might not be. I think it might go to my booth. They've got some pewter here an English uh, saddle. This is kind of neat. When you see these big primary bold colors and this sort of thing, this is typically right around 1980 that you see this type of art. And it's got a nice signature sweet rendezvous. T over P is a certain type of proof, which means it was done in a limited edition, usually for the artist or the printer and they didn't make a lot of those. So when you say CAP or TP, that's a little more valuable. And they're asking 500 for this because it's a listed artist and it's an interesting piece. Embossed apparently in the paper from what I can tell looking up close. Hey, how are you? And let's see what else they've got. Well, this looks like a West German vase here. These are becoming popular. You can tell why, because that drip glaze is pretty fun. And West Germany is the mark. There were a lot of vases like this made in West Germany in the uh, 1960s and 70s. And there are collectors for them. Here's the coffee canister out of the Treasure Craft fruit line from about 1970. And they've got some cool Pyrex. I love the colors on this guy. And only $15. I have to say their prices are good. This one for 30 with the lid. The lid is usually missing. And then let's see what they've got back here. Okay, remember when roller skates looked like this? That is so funny. I think there's some that are even Nike from that era, and those really are up there in price. But yeah, these are from uh, right when they started to mix sports shoes and roller skates in the right around the end of the 1970s. They have that priced at 120. The chalkware icon here is $50. Very sad. Nice glass washboard. Glass washboards, notice it says Victory. They quit using metal during the Second World War because of metal restrictions, and so they made glass washboards instead. A lot of people ended up preferring them for lingerie, especially these little size ones, but the reason it's called Victory is, well, you were helping contribute to the war effort by not buying a metal one. And look at these big China head dolls. And I want to point out the one on the left because she's a little busty. And that was unusual because these were, even though they were for young girls to imagine themselves as women, the chests are usually flat. So that is really rather unusual in the body, the way that that's been done. I don't know when the body was made. Her name is Berta. She is an old head. It may be that the body was made at a later time. A lot of doll collectors in the 1950s made bodies, cloth bodies, to go with old china heads. Anyhow, they've got fun stuff. I like the color in the vintage fashion. Yeah, this is just really neat. And it's also fun because I'm going to buy something from them. Well, that was really exciting for me. I love seeing somebody who has an interest in this and is starting to deal as a reseller actually coming out and doing a show. And I asked them why they decided to do a show instead of just selling online. And they said, well, we get a lot of big stuff. We get furniture, we get lamps, uh, they buy a lot of storage units. And they also said that, you know, like I find, 
as much fun and as cool as it is to sell online, you can sell a lot of volume at a show in a short period of time without having to take pictures, make listings, wait for somebody to ask questions, hope they bid, hope they buy, hope you get what you want. You just put it out, you put a price on it, someone likes it, they walk up and they buy it, they can see it, they don't have to ask a million questions, and they're excited and you get that collegial moment of being able to hang out and talk about things that you both enjoy together. So. I love the shows and I'm glad to see younger people are starting to take them up too. Uh, the, I'm, I have to say I am coming to where I like online selling more and more than I used to. It's getting more fun, I'm getting better at it, it's easier. So you know it works both ways but there's so many different ways to skin a cat and I think that if you have the energy to try doing a show. Uh, I've got to say the shows have been good because people are looking for something to do right now and so the places that are having shows are reporting good results. Sometimes as a dealer you look at a table full of stuff and think man I want to be that dealer. This guy's got such a good collection of helicopters particularly but 10 toys from Japan from the 1950s and 60s. These small helicopters are worth three digits the large one with the big battery pack that likely still works is somewhere in the 300 range, potentially. These are very collectible now because so few of them did last. They were not made to last. They were also played with very hard. Well, here's one of these Hollywood Regency style figural compotes. This one says genuine monarch crystal made in West Germany. So. I always assumed that these were mostly American in origin, but to see that makes me realize that this style really did take off all over the world at one point. So I imagine that people, now that I've seen this, people in Europe and other parts of the world are probably seeing these things out there as well. This one appears to be priced around $50. And let's take a look through here and just see what they have. The little whale here is a pilgrim glass piece. They did a lot of glass animals in the 1970s and 80s and 90s. It was kind of a mainstay for them. Bunch of Lennox pieces in here, including the Weatherly with the silver edge that has sort of a shell twist to the outer edges of it. This is another widely reproduced item. Brothels almost never gave out tokens, and when they did, they were very discreet. These are less than discreet. Look at the great green color on this Philco radio. It, it's dark and yet it glows somehow. I love that shade. I have not seen it in that color before. I see a lot of beige. You see beige and brown the most. I've seen this one in pink and yellow as well. This one came in a lot of different colors in the 50s. Here's a shade of purple you don't see in Viking glass very often. This console bowl will date to either the late 60s or the late 70s. I believe they have this in their line both times. I guess you would call this a ewer because it doesn't have a stopper, but it does have a handle like a pitcher. This looks like Brondby from Sweden, but surprise, it's made in Israel, hand painted. There are a lot of nice things that were made in Israel. I think because Israel formed late as a country, uh, it came into being at a time when studio art and those sorts of things were becoming more and more a way for people to make a living and also more desirable in the marketplace. So you will see a lot of nice metal pieces and ceramic pieces from Israel that are very modernist. Well this fellow is unpacking a van full of Ottomans. This guy's a cool guy. He used to be in St. Petersburg. He's elsewhere in Florida now and he really has an eye for modernism. And he really likes these fanciful shapes like these, this pair of lamps from the 50s. I think those are just great. We're used to seeing them with a dancing man and dancing woman, but the ones that are just floral in some ways are easier to use in a lot of houses. 
This is a great lamp here too with these fiberglass shades and that wonderful twisted space. And then this red and white job is going to be right out of the 70s. Very cool. I like these two, speaking of match dancing pairs. This was another thing, this arabesque in a very stylized way. These are going to date to the late 50s and I like the metal surrounds as well. For you repurposers, here's some ideas of different things you can use for lighting. This is a big old paddle out of an industrial milk churn, I believe, that spade-shaped thing with the three bars on each side. Some of these are old uh, things from dairies, old chicken egg crates. You just never know. People are very inventive these days and people like this industrial look and they like farmhouse looks. So now you can sell these sorts of things. Here's a neat old tin tea box from a general store going to date sometime around 1890 to 1900. The detail in the paint, this is trying to approximate what you see in Victorian furniture and the detail of the carving at that time. And it also has a nice chromolithograph print on the facing. Printing on tin became a technology that was really widespread in the 1890s and you see a lot of cool store displays from that time as a result. This dealer has some nice porcelain and I'm excited to see younger people are starting to become interested in these really lovely hand-painted porcelain pieces again. Flowers seem like they're starting to come back with younger women and I think it may be because a lot of people remember these sorts of things in their grandmother's house but their parents were into modernism or Ikea and they're looking for something that really looks not like that. Something that has some style and some grace and jumps out and that's why you're seeing compotes like this figural one selling above $100 again for the first time in a while. I'm particularly taken with this piece which is Limoges was hand-painted after the factory and I love the spider web in there. That's something that you see about 1910. You'll see spider webs as part of motifs in hand-painted items. This is German. CT Altwasser is a company that made a lot of these little dresser sets. So you have a hair receiver, a jewelry box, a small tray, and a large tray. This vase is by David Lawton. He is the son of Charles Lawton. Charles has passed on in the past several years, which is too bad. He was a really interesting guy. He was a very skillful glass blower, and thankfully David is carrying on the tradition. Look at the depth, the three-dimensional aspect. This is what Charles Lawton figured out how to do in a way that really gave an Art Nouveau feel, but in a different manner than we'd seen before. And he was working a lot in the 1980s and 90s. His pieces sell for hundreds and sometimes over a thousand. And David Lawton is not far behind. So if you see pieces by David Lawton or Charles Lawton, they are definitely worth picking up. They're just old enough now to be coming onto the resale market, so it's possible you might find a bargain from somebody who doesn't really know what they have or what uh, someone in the family had. This is Fenton Coin Spot with the opalescence. These sets usually sell. It's got a lot of glasses, so let's see what the tag is on there. And we'll show you the yellow, hard to find. Okay, yes, this Fenton set is $3.95 because it has so many glasses in the cranberry glass. And then the yellow is a hard-to-find color in that cocktail shaker. And it just wouldn't be a Florida show if there wasn't a huge ship's wheel for sale somewhere. It just fits the decorating scheme around here. And one that size could be as much as $800 or $1,000 in the right hands. Got a table of jewelry. You'll see random unsorted tables of things outside here. There's a lot of stuff that's more on a wholesale level outside here, so that makes it an interesting place to come shopping. 
big fish is probably from Mexico, looking at the bubbly nature of the glass. The Fiesta Ware you see here are 1990s colors. Only $8 for the dinner plates. If you're interested in Fiesta and you like the later colors, then you can actually get some pretty good deals on it still. And here is the classic, ubiquitous, West Bend Penguin Hot Cold Keeper. And this has the Bakelite knobs. You'll also see them with wood. You want to make sure the seals are good. It looks like this one's fine. I think that the stuff in there is just dust. So, and you look at the bottom. 15? Okay, thank you. And you look at the bottom, and it's got the mark for West Bend Penguin. Hot and cold server, so you can put hot or cold things on the table. They're usually used for ice buckets in cocktail bars. They're very deco looking because they came out in the 30s, but they made them into the 1970s, so they're actually pretty easy to find. And that's why even though 15 is a good price, I'm probably going to wait on it because I can usually get these for 10 or less wholesale and then sell them for 25 and if you need just one cup of coffee to get started in the morning, maybe it should be this gigantic cup and saucer. A lot of these were done to show off the china in the china shops. This one's Historic America by Johnson Brothers, done in the 1970s, especially to sell during the bicentennial. The jumbo cup and saucer was $65. He's got some neat Lucite lamps there and a good chrome lamp in the back. A lot of lamps, actually. And I wanted to show this lamp because it's hard to find because the shades, if you broke one of these shades, it was done. And the shades are kind of cool. They have a color inside of them. They're partly opaque, but when you look under the bottom, it's almost like alien brain or something. I'm not really sure how to describe it. So these are what the shades look like on this particular style lamp. And I just think that's a really cool design and it gives a little bit of color to the light when it shines. They had tables with the same curly cues that they went with. These were done in the late 60s. These have been reupholstered at some time, probably in the 1980s with the gray shell upholstery. Originally those would have been bright solid colors like a bright blue. Here we see lucite lamps and the mauve color is right out of the early 80s. Those are classic and coming back in style. Watch out folks, the 80s are right here, right now. And this one with the bends each direction, very artsy. I think the problem is finding a lucite finial for any of these. All of them are great, and if I had extra finials, I would have made an offer on them. But without the Lucite finial, they're not as valuable. It is a problem. He's also got a big stack of beer trays, and this one's in good shape, but he wants 25 which is what I think it's worth. Nice, though, from the 50s. Seeing older ones is good. Here's my friend Carol on the right. She sells cat-related things, advertising-related things. She knows a lot of my buddies who were into antique advertising because she and her late husband were. This is a neat Metlock Stein. That's Metlock, M-E-T-T-L-A-C-H, not Metlocks, M-E-T-L-O-X, which was made in California. This stuff was made in Germany, and this was made in Germany before the First World War. That's why the old Billery and Bach label, in addition to everything else about it. It says love, Liebe in German. It's very sweet. The quarters were a popular design in the era around 1910. Book plate from India. I think this is very nice and it's interesting because it actually shows some face jewelry where they would pierce the nose and have very elaborate gold jewelry that uh, fanned out over the face. I saw an exhibition of that jewelry in St. Petersburg, Florida at the Fine Arts Museum a few years ago and it was fascinating. I could not believe it. It's so different than our culture. A lot of these hand-painted book plates are available on the market now and they sell from 
15 to $45 each typically, unless it's something related to the Kama Sutra or other things of that nature, and then those sell for quite a bit more. Now maybe this is more of a nostalgia buy for me, and maybe I'll end up sitting on it for a long time, but I'm going to give the fellow 20 bucks for this framed print from the 1980 Lake Placid Winter Olympic Games because this is what got me really interested in hockey when our semi-pro amateur team beat the professional Russian team in the finals of Olympic hockey in 1980. It was a huge upset and it got a whole generation of people, myself included, paying attention to hockey. Look at the fun repurposing of these golf club heads. One has become a fish it's just the neatest thing. What a great way to use old golf clubs because they change them and they're not necessarily useful as golf clubs anymore. This one has been made into an apple. One behind here is a ship's wheel. I think those are very clever. $99 on the little fish. That seems like a good deal for the amount of work and creativity that went into that. Well, the fellow behind me here has an interesting booth full of old tools, and he sharpens them, and he cleans them, and he makes them very presentable, and he's got everything from woodworking planes to old Yankee screwdrivers. I'll give you a look at his booth real quickly. I would love to stay and show you more, but I need to go get open, so I'll give you a quick scan of his very cool booth. And I'll show these fellas as they're opening. There's another one here I hope I can come back to because I understand he's doing a lot of wholesaling and that that's a good one to shop at. But in the meantime, I've got to go get my booth open. So this is George the Antique Nomad and I'm signing off for now from the West Palm Beach Antique Extravaganza. But it's great to see you again. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and here on YouTube. So we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!